from a person with your amount of experience and knowledge um, and hearing those reports, what do you think the reality of the situation is right now? And what do you think the next operational period is going to look like or the next couple operational periods will look like? Um, of course, the initial uh, link on a search and rescue event is, is as quick as possible. Of course, stability of the building, but entering canines as uh, quick as possible into areas where humans can't go and i.e. the rubble that was sitting uh, on the street uh, that everybody was focused on, multi-layers and multi-layers of, of building floors. Really, they were all pancaked on top of each other, what it appeared like. Uh, humans basically unable to get that weight. You don't want to send a whole bunch of people on top of the piles. There's the potential of people being under the pile because you're just going to flood, create a, a smaller void space, and that's not smart. So canines, uh, search canines are really important in that uh, being able to do an entire perimeter check uh, through the pile as deep as they can go. They are trained phenomenally. Uh, they are certified in what they do, and it is an incredible uh, scene to watch them go to work. And so with both federal task forces in the area, Task Force 1 and Task Force 2, uh, they had an incredible resource to that canine component. And so that was one of the real good issues that they had. Unfortunately, um, they haven't had a lot of, uh, of live find uh, hits back from those canines. Uh, recently, a young boy was just removed from that rubble pile not too long ago, um, which was a great save. He was more in an, in, an entombed situation, so he wasn't suffering from any uh, crush injuries. He was basically in an area where he was able to get out, uh, move around, but he was not able to get out um, from that uh, entombment. Uh, That's some incredible. Of the, to, it, see, it is. to see that kind of fall and to see anybody being saved is just wild. 100%. And so there, you don't just walk away. You stay in a rescue mode as long as possible. Some recovery modes have to be uh, introduced at a certain time. When you switch from rescue to recovery really goes by the time clock. And so you figure 24 hours, 48 hours, four days, how long can you go without food, water, clothing, and shelter? And so all of those factions fall in there. Uh, could there be the ability of fresh water from a broken pipe or a water bottle from a refrigerator that somebody happened to be getting a drink of water at 1.30 at night when this came down? The steel refrigerator kept the concrete floor from smashing their heads, but yet they're now about the size of the bottom of the freezer and kind of hanging out with whatever was spilled out. He, he or she might have access to water. That would be incredible, i.e., as those victims were at the Haiti when they were in the Caribbean market, having some access to some things. But those that don't, you know, you're looking at that time period again without any water. Uh, they will bring in, of course, at the same time, cadaver dogs that aren't, uh, that they're not trained for live find, uh, just to be able to give an ID location and or even the amount of possible uh, deceased victims that might be in that pile again. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm hoping that they remain in a rescue mode, at least for the next day uh, as well, until they do call that in and get more accountability from those that are still missing. 